Welcome to Boat Tour Tuesday by Sailing Doodles. Today I'm giving you a tour of this brand new 2022 Lagoon 46 by Navigar Yachting. We picked up this brand new Lagoon 460 from Navigar Yachting in the British Virgin Islands and sailed it around that beautiful archipelago. In this video I'm going to give you an in-depth tour of the boat and review some of the things I liked and disliked. The Lagoon 460 has a raised flybridge that's great for hanging out. And all the sheets and lines run to the very comfortable helm station. She has a spacious cockpit and a very well laid out salon and galley. This is a standard charter layout with two heads and two cabins on each side. Each of the four heads has a separate shower with door to keep it dry. So kick back as we give you a tour of this beautiful Lagoon 460. So this boat is available for charter with Navigar Yachting. There's a link popping up for that. Or if you want to get in their owner program, you can do the same thing. They give you a guaranteed return uh, through your charter revenue. Or if you don't want to go through that program, they have a uh, shared owner program where you can actually get all the tax advantages of having it as a business and all that. It's really cool. So they estimate you get between 9 and 12% uh, return on your, on your value for the boat. But uh, So you can go to Navigar Yachting for that. Other than that, I want to give you a tour of this awesome Lagoon 46. As always, we're going to start at the bow of the boat. Um, it does not come with the beautiful woman sun tanning. I'm sorry. Uh, it is an option though. I mean, you'd have to find it yourself. But uh, so starting out at the bow, it's pretty standard. You have your uh, two trampolines uh, and then you have uh, your anchor down the middle. Uh, this one does have a self-tacking jib, which I've wasn't really a fan of in the past. I've never really sailed them too much until this boat. I really do actually like the self-tacking jib. It makes things pretty easy. Uh, just one less thing you have to do when you're tacking or jiving because it's, like it says in the, in the name, self-tacking. So there you go. Um, and then um, pretty comfortable from coming up here. There's not too much uh, wave slap in this boat. And then the spray doesn't tend to go over the, the top too much when you're sitting back there in the helm station. We'll show you that a little more. You do have your two uh, pulpit seats there, um, one on each side. And uh, these right here are your four peaks uh, for storage and all that. You can make it as a uh, crew cabin or something like that. I mean, but on a 46 foot boat, you're not gonna have a crew cabin. You're just gonna use it for storage. You could put a bunk in there, but I would not recommend it. And then of course, on the other side, you have a repeat. You have another pulpit seat and uh, another four peak storage area. Your anchor chain, this is nice, big. I think this is 3 8 inch chain. Um, and then we've got an anchor down there and then a bridle that comes on either side. Uh, and uh, we're doing pretty good. We're in 30 feet of water. We put out 150 feet of chain. We're doing all right, no problems at all. Coming back here, um, your windlass controls, sorry, your windlass is here. And then your controls for the windlass are underneath this uh, area here. And here you have your water storage. Um, it is, uh, you have a couple tanks here. You have about 140 gallons of water total, uh, which, yeah, you know, uh, for a boat, it, it, when you have a water maker, that's not a big deal, a big deal. If you don't have a water maker, you want more than that. But a lot of boats, what they're doing these days is they're having more fuel storage than they are having water storage because you can always make more water with a water maker and you can't make more fuel. So uh, your water tanks are under here. Uh, your windlass controls are actually under this side. Uh, it's pretty simple. Your up and down standard stuff. Uh, you can see the other water tank over here and then your life jacket storage under there. Uh, but that's all pretty standard stuff. Nothing too crazy here. You do have this little seating area here, um, which is nice. You have the cushions. Uh, we're still waiting on a new cushion to be delivered here, but it's nice for hanging out, especially when the wind's not too much out here. One of the kind of cool things about this is on the eyebrows here, you have these hand holds all the way around. So if it's really rough, you can be holding on all the way back. And then you have your flush mount hatches for uh, your cabin, and it does get a good amount of airflow. Honestly, both the forward cabin and the aft cabins. A lot of times, aft cabins don't get much airflow through these hatches, but this one does pretty well. Uh, I've been pretty happy with it. And here you have your generator. It's 110 volts. If you want to do Europe, you'd have a 220. I'm not sure of the size of it, but it's big enough to power the whole boat. Uh, and it's got air, five air conditioners, one for each you know cabin and one for the salon. So plenty big, and it'll power all your inverters and everything you need. So and it's pretty quiet. It really is not too loud. You can barely hear it when. The, uh, when you're in the cabins, um, so not too bad. So that is pretty much all there is up here. 
Um, so now I will take you to the helm station and show you where uh, the boat is run from. This is the Flybridge uh, helm station. That's where you drive the boat from. Again, uh, it does not come with the pretty girl laying out. I apologize for that, but I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it is pretty nice driving the boat from right here. Um, you got great visibility all the way throughout and all your lines run aft. You can run the entire boat from right here. Uh, and so it, it's pretty convenient. I'll kind of go over some of the lines. These two winches right here are electric winches. Uh, you got your controls, you got fast and slow on each one. You got fast and slow, right? So it is pretty convenient for doing that. All your lines run aft. You got your main halyard, your main sheet. You got your reefing lines on this side. You have, because it's just single, it's a self-tacking jib, you just have one jib sheet. And then, let's see here, uh, let's get your topping lift and everything. One kind of cool thing is, uh, is it does have a downhaul line on the halyard, which is kind of nice, because then we can just, instead of having to uh, attach the head of the sail down, down low, you can just pull in this downhaul and then pull in on the main halyard and it keeps your halyard from getting too loose and flopping around up there, which is kind of nice. So having all your controls here and then, uh, you know, you have your sail, uh, your, your line bags and all that for getting the lines out of the way. You have your uh, furling line for the jib right here. And one thing I think is really cool, I've never used before, is that it's got this uh, uh, electric, uh, what do they call it, a uh, flat winder, which is for your, um, traveler line which you for a button you can just move your traveler either direction which is really easy to do uh because something you know tra moving your traveler can generally be a little bit difficult because you have to let one sheet in at the same time you let one out it can kind of be a pain uh coming up here you have your cockpit seating uh, again we're still waiting on the proper cushions for this boat but you have uh seating here all the way across and then uh your sun pad back here for hanging out this whole bimini top is collapsible, so if you wanted to get it out of the way and actually get sun here. Plus, uh, we do have this little, uh, I don't know, cover you could put up at the front if it's raining or in inclement weather, something like that. Drive the whole boat from here. It's the whole B&G suite with huge B&G screen, multifunction display. You can control your radio, your stereo from it. Uh, you can get your, uh, you can put a radar on and all this multifunction display will do everything. And then you have a couple more multifunction displays right here, which will display your autopilot and your wind speed and all that. And then over here, you also have your uh, autopilot controls. Your engine controls are right here with the two new Yanmar, uh, digital displays you know all the new Yanmar engines are kind of digital so um, that's good and bad however you like it they're more efficient and they're more accurate and these are Yanmar 57 horsepower and this thing will do uh, at 2200 rpm we've had it seven knots no problem um, so I like I like the speed with that and you can control some of your lights right here as well as you have uh, USB outlets for charging your phone up here if you need it as well and you can sit back here with a bunch of people hanging out it's you can see the whole you can see how almost you can see every corner of the boat in the front the back the visibility isn't quite that great i can't see the transom of the boat so you definitely need somebody there telling you which way to go uh you know how far you are from the dock and all that but it is a really nice usable space up here and it's cool to hang out and like i said all your lines run aft and uh yeah, stereo works up here, no problem. So it's kind of nice, you can actually access the cockpit. You can step down either side right here or on the other side, so let's go downstairs. Uh, starting off on the transom on each side, uh, on your port side here, you do have the swim ladder. It's nice for getting up and down, and of course your fresh water for hosing off after you've been uh, in the salt water. Your uh, engines live right here on each side, just aft of each for aft cabin. Um, honestly, I haven't really um, spent any time down below while the engines are running. I've been up there, but you know, if you're just cruising around, island hopping, it doesn't really matter uh, how loud it is down there. And I don't think it is very loud. I think it's pretty quiet because the generator is very quiet. You do have your lifelines that go across either way. There's three of them that kind of make it a little more secure when you're on your way. Stepping forward, uh, kind of on each side, you have these built-in kind of drink holders and whatever you want to do. You can put uh, hors d'oeuvres and all that. Uh, steps up on each side are not too steep, kind of nice. And then on the inside of the cockpit here, you have your uh, your davit system here. Um, it works really great. Um, so this whole thing goes over and lifts the dinghy up pretty well. I think it's rated to 400 pounds, so you're gonna have a decent sized dinghy on there. Uh, the one, there's two da two things that uh, on this boat that I'm a little eh about. Um, number one is that this winch right here 
is not electric uh, because uh, this is what pulls up and down the dinghy. And you know, the dinghy weighs, I think it's 230 pounds um, with fuel and engine, something like that, maybe a little more. Uh, and it's, a, it's, it, it's basically you crank on this for a little while just to get the dinghy up. It's probably two minutes of cranking at a good amount of pace. It's a, it's a little bit of a workout. So if you're gonna get one, I'd put an electric winch right here just so it brings the dinghy up so much easier. But this whole thing goes down and it's and uh, makes it, if we're going down, it's easy. Inside uh, the, the, the cockpit here, uh, you do have seating all the way around this table. This leaf will open up here if you want to have more seating on this side for someone. And then this other leaf will open up. And kind of the cool thing is that this whole, number one, there's storage in here. Uh, you can put, you know, they've got engine oil and all that. But if you just have a few people, you can have your seating there. Or you can roll this whole thing over right there, lock it up, unfold your other leaf, and you can put your cushion back down here. And then you got seating for about eight people around the table too. So it's kind of a cool thing. And then you can still walk down getting out of here. So it's kind of nice. Uh, again, we don't have the proper cushions for this boat because it's brand new. Literally when we got this boat, it had 19 hours on the engine. Now we're at like 24 hours on the engine. So we put like five hours on it. Uh, and so they didn't have the uh, correct cushions for the boat yet, uh, but they are being made. On the other side over here, you just have kind of like a day bed area. And again, these are not the proper cushions for this. It would, be, it would generally be a lot more luxurious. Uh, and then cup holders and all that right here. Uh, inside these are storage. I'm sure you could get extra refrigerators or whatever you needed right here. Uh, and then on this side is your trash. It's kind of convenient. You just lift that up here. You got, you can put a little plastic bag in there. It's pretty easy to do. And then that is your trash. And then you get it out. You can pull it out from right here. It's kind of an easy way to do things. Uh, it's nice having this little pass through to the galley right here. It gets a little airflow coming through. And then these doors open up nice and wide, which does get a lot of airflow. But again, this is my second gripe about the boat. So one was the dinghy. And then the other is that you can't just um, so the door only closes that far, uh, right here, or then you have to, if you want it to close further, then you have to close a second door to do that. And so you can't just close one door and you can't, it's so now it's really difficult. If I just wanted to go in and out real quick, now I have to open two doors just to get the, I have to open that door. Then I have to open this door in order to get enough space out. I don't like that design because I don't want to have to open two doors every time I want to come in and out. But that's, you know, whatever. All right, so that is um, the uh, cockpit back here and we will, oh, and then of course, there's storage underneath all the, all the seating and all that, but I'm not gonna show you too much of that. Uh, and then we will show you into the salon. Coming into the salon, you have all your lighting controls out here for the cockpit area and as well as inside. You have these really cool uh, recessed lightings that give you really a lot of good uh, light in here and it makes it look really cool at night. Uh, I really like it. Uh, but stepping inside here, lots of seating inside. Uh, uh, and then your air conditioning vents run around here and it gets this the, the salon nice and cool. It really does well. And this does pretty good too. Uh, and definitely there are boats that have more airflow coming through, but this one does okay. Um, and you can see easily eight people, maybe more around this table. Um, coming over here to your nav station, uh, you know, just your, it's just a, a desk. You can pull up this little chair over here and uh, oops, more storage under there, but you can pull this up right here if you wanted to and make it uh, a desk. Um, I normally, when I do my work, I actually work from this table here. Uh, but your storage, your more light controls over here. You have, what's kind of cool is they have um, USB outlets everywhere as well as 110 outlets, your radio. Um, this is the uh, air conditioner controls for the salon. And this is your multifunction display. Um, I'm okay with it. I'm not a super fan. That's, but that's the way boats are going these days is everything's digital. So you turn off and on your generator from here. You select shore power from here. You uh, check all your water and your fuel and all that from one display, which it worked when it works, it's great. I mean, it, it's worked since we've been on the boat. I just don't, it's not redundant, right? So, I mean, then if, what if that goes out? You know, then I, I can't change over, change over and start stuff. I, I like having old school switches and gauges. That's just me, but this is the way pretty much all the boats are going these days. Uh, and then your fusion stereo system um, is connected here. 
They're going to install a water maker. This one does not have it yet, but the water maker controls would be here. Um, and then it's got speakers throughout. Um, a couple in here, a couple outside, a couple upstairs, so it does pretty well. Uh, a couple fans on each side. Um, but generally, you know, at night, we at, during the daytime, we don't run the generator. At night, we'll run the generator, just have the air conditioning in the bedrooms, and it works quite well. Moving over here into the galley. Um, because it's a catamaran, it does not have, it does not need a gimbal stove. Uh, I heated up a pot of hot water when we were in pretty, pretty choppy seas earlier today and, uh, didn't spill anything. So you don't really need it. Uh, you know, pantry storage over here, um, storage for more pantry storage under here. On this side, you do have an oven, um, and another drawer just for cooking utensils and stuff like that and cell phones for some reason. Uh, but, uh, and then, uh, silverware and then your pots and pans, I'm sorry, plates and then pots and pans down below. You know, there's, there's lots of storage and then storage under the sink. You can do whatever you need to do here. Cups, uh, mugs, whatever you need. I mean, it's got plenty of storage everywhere. Really, I think this is a pretty good size pantry for cruising, uh, not bad. And then on this side, it does have a uh, forward opening refrigerator, just kind of like a dorm size fridge, maybe a little bit bigger than that, um, which, does quite well. Uh, a nice big deep uh, sink for doing dishes and all that, um, which I do like. I, I I have no complaints about this. And then of course you can pull that out as well. It is having nice having this open up right here. Uh, just to get a little more airflow. And if you wanted to hand stuff out, you can do that there. Uh, just to keep it cool in here when you're not running the air conditioning. Um, and then we'll take you on the other side of the salon. And you have two more refrigerators. You can never get enough refrigeration on a boat. That's uh, my. So this is a refrigerator here. Uh, we're keeping beer and wine in there. And then uh, the bottom is a freezer. It is rock solid. We got, I don't know, the girls bought ice cream. but And we have three bags of ice that we have not touched. More storage up here, uh, kind of a liquor cabinet, whatever you want to do here. But pretty functional space. I do like it. Uh, my only gripe would be I would want more airflow coming through the forward. If they could put two more of those windows on either side just to get more airflow going through. Because more airflow, the better. And and on a boat that's the way just the way it is so i really do like it oh and then down here is all your controls for turning off your anchor light your electronics uh your steaming light uh bilge pumps you know all that stuff you control from right here so this is a four cabin four head design so i'll just they're basically identical on each side so i'll just show you the starboard side over here and uh so come on down coming aft it's a pretty good size cabin here i mean it's it's a queen size bed that you can step around uh, it's got the recessed lighting all the way, and then this hatch opens up a uh, pretty amount, a good amount of air. And then if you really wanted to, you can open this up as well. And there's another little hatch that you can get even more airflow. Um, and it's nice and bright through here. Um, you have uh, your outlets and your USB outlets, and then uh, cabinet space all up and down here. And hanging lockers uh, right here. It's a decent amount of space. Uh, you know, um, it's catamaran. That's that's one thing you don't have a lot of is, is a lot uh, storage space for your clothes and such like that. It's just uh, it's just the way it is on a cat because you have kind of narrow holes. Your electrical controls, like your circuit breakers and all that, are behind this panel here, uh, which kind of lets you do what you need to do. Coming in here, you have your own head with its uh, uh, shower that is actually separate, so that you can have your door closed and not get the rest of your bathroom uh, wet. And a nice, you know, kind of. You know, I don't know if that's granite, some kind of faux granite counters and all that. Pretty decent amount of space in here with electric flush toilet and then uh, macerator pumps for pumping overboard when you need to. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, it's not bad. Not really, not too bad for especially being a four cabin, four head on a 46 foot boat. Uh, it's a decent amount of space. I kind of prefer, generally speaking, having um, four cabin you know, two head uh, on, on a 46, just because you get a lot bigger bathroom. Um, you got to share it, but you get a lot bigger and then you get a slightly bigger cabin with more storage space, stuff like that. But now we will take you to the forward cabin. You know, more electronic equipment here, uh, kind of, you know, the access to uh, components, circuit breaker, stuff like that. Uh, and then you do have some storage coming forward, uh, but coming forward into the, uh, the forward cabin, slightly smaller. I mean, basically the same bed size, but, oops, um, but a little bit 
narrower access just because you're getting more narrow. Uh, and then you do have, um, you know, you don't have quite as big a hanging locker on each side, just a, a couple little drawers here and a, a drawer in this side. And then you do have basically the same size head as the aft cabin. So, um, you know, each one has their own. Yeah, it's it doesn't, the forward cabin, on a lot of cats, the forward cabin actually gets more air. On this one, it doesn't because this hatch is down here. So when it when the air blows in, you're not getting quite as much air over here. So um, there's trade-offs to either way. But overall, a pretty comfortable design and spacious enough. I, I was, I, it's pretty spacious. I've always been ish, iffy on, on cats and uh, this one, I like it. All right, so that concludes a tour of the Lagoon 46. So guys, you both have been on a couple cats. You've been on a couple different ones. You've been on them one other one. What are your impressions on the 46 versus, well, the 40, the 400, the 400 was the one you've been on and the last one. What do you think, guys? I think it's really spacious. I like how wide it is. I like that there's a lot of room out here. I also really like the modern look. Like, I love a sleek, simple colors, brown, gray. I love it. I mean, the design, the, the interior design, I don't know who, who was the one who actually designed all the furniture and stuff, but it's, like, super beautiful and very well distributed. And the, like, it's very convenient, like, space-wise. Yeah, wide. I feel like there's so much space yeah. for even all yeah, of us yeah. No, here. definitely, like, this is, like, I've been already in three or four, and for me, I mean, like, the island experience are very nice, but this one is really, really, really nice. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's the best one we've been on lately. Uh, I think if you were to uh, if you were to get an owner's version, like have one whole side, like have a big closet space, yeah. big bathroom, and yeah. all that, I'd be, and then have your guest side. I mean, the way. toilets, like the heads, some, and the yeah. rooms, it's just like I yeah. think they're super pretty cool. spacious, yeah. honestly. Yeah. For it's like so. being in a hotel, like it, it doesn't feel like even when we are in this calm water, it really feels like we are just and land like in a very nice house yeah yeah for I sure agree. Cool. all right well uh, thank you guys for watching and if you are interested in the boat it is for charter with navigar yachting there's a link popping up for that and if you want to get in on their owner program it's a pretty cool deal generally the way it works is you put like 20 percent down and then you can finance for whatever term you'd like and way they give you guaranteed charter income uh, for the boats, which, which should pay your note on it. So that's where that's the whole goal anyway. So, and there's a couple different uh, programs you get into. Plus you get the tax savings on that. You get to write off all the depreciation and everything. So kind of a cool way to get into a boat. Plus you get to do, you get to use the boat six, seven weeks a year or more, however much it is. So. But the most important thing, you hit the like button and subscribe. There you go. Thank you guys. <laughs>